The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up the hill. Then he sat down and was joined by his disciples. Then he began to speak, and this is what he taught them. How happy are the poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy the gentle. They shall have the earth for their heritage. Happy those who mourn, they shall be comforted. Happy those who hunger and thirst for what is right, they shall be satisfied. Happy the merciful, they shall have mercy shown to them. Happy the pure in heart, they shall see God. Happy the peacemakers, they shall be called sons of God. Happy those who are persecuted in the cause of right, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy are you when people abuse you and persecute you and speak all kinds of calumny against you on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. This is how they persecuted the prophets before you. The Gospel of the Lord. So we had a guest come to visit us on one particular occasion here in Holy Family and uh, they popped into the kitchen and one of our girls uh, in the house here who shall remain nameless but whose name rhymes with Ace and she's great, um, uh, she welcomed this guest into the kitchen and she said to this guest, she said, would you like some strawberries and ice cream? And the guest said, uh, no, I haven't had my dinner yet. But she said, but you're an adult. You can have your dessert first. Right? And it gave us a great insight into what this particular girl thinks adulthood is all about. You know, you can have your dessert first. That's what it means to be an adult. It's great. It's great. But it got me thinking, as do many things, that... Uh, why, why do we have that rule? Why do we have that rule in families, you know? That you have your dinner first and then your dessert. The reason we do that is because you don't want to spoil your appetite, right? You have your dessert first, then you've got a belly full of completely pointless foods, even though they taste wonderful, like strawberries. Uh, not particularly nutritious, but you've got a belly full of them and it does nothing for you. So you have your good food first, then the dessert, right? It's, it's, it's mom, mom, mom's wisdom in there somewhere that we should uh, have our good meal first. Now... What can often happen to us in the spiritual life is if we fill our souls, right, with spiritual junk food, we're not hungry for spiritual truth. If we fill our hearts with spiritual rubbish, we're not hungry, we've no thirst, we've no desire for, for spiritual truth, for, for the spiritual richness that's being offered to us. Okay, so how does this work in reality? I'm sure we've all kind of had the experience. If you, um, when I was young, you couldn't really binge watch a series, okay, unless you bought the box set, which, was, which were usually horrifically expensive. And buying a box set of MacGyver or Dallas, I mean, not, not, not even sure if they existed. I don't, I don't think they did. Whereas now, with the internet, you can actually binge watch a series. You can wait till the series is over and just watch all eight episodes back to back not eat that day, not, eat, not shave, come downstairs looking all kind of pale and say, I just finished watching the whole series of... What's the name of your name of show quickly? Give me one. Show off. Sherlock. That would never happen, though. That would never happen. So, you know, you come downstairs, you know. And, and we, so we can actually binge watch a show. And I think you'll find, you'll find that when we watch, when, when, we, when we fill our, our day, right, with little screen entertainment, you're not going to have much of a desire for the rosary. Somehow. Because you're used to being entertained, you know. So this entertainment culture that we have now, it's, by the way, it was actually the, to the very same back in the Romans' time. When life began, be, began to become a little more comfortable and didn't have to worry anymore about, like, you know, what do we eat today? Or who do, what enemies do we have to fight off today? When food was plentiful and the borders were secure, what do you do now? Games, right? Colosseum, Circus Maximus, Entertainment. We have time now for entertainment. So not that entertainment is a bad thing, but all things 
in their proper proportion, all things in measure. And if we spend a lot of time, right, just with this kind of entertainment culture uh, in front of screens for hours and hours, you will find that you will not have a hunger for spiritual things. You will not be interested in the lives of saints. You will not be interested in what the Pope has to say about anything unless it's controversial. You won't be interested in the gospel. You won't really be interested in Jesus. So in the things that matter the most, the things that matter for eternal life, remember, 10,000 years of eternal life, eternal life is only beginning. It's only getting started when you're 10,000 years there. So the couple of hours, the, the, the 80, 90 years that we have here will pass and will pass quickly in comparison to eternity. And yet we invest so much time in the entertainment in the here and now and not in eternal life which lasts forever. Our, our lives here just being a blink of the eye in comparison. But all of just the entertainment of the now takes all of our time. And not only the entertainment, because there's more, these days, there's more than just entertainment going on. I mean, maybe back in the day, you could, you could spend a lot of time watching ha relatively harmless TV shows. Remember Little House in the Prairie? Any of you viewers at home? Little House in the Prairie. What was her name? Little thing running through the grass, and she falls. Oh, dear, and she gets up. And the big scandal of the day is that the horse broke loose. Oh, the horse broke loose. And the village gets together, and they find the horse down in the well, and they pull the horse out, and everyone bands together. Beautiful little show. Okay, that got replaced by Love Hate. Okay, up in Dublin, where they're shooting the faces off each other, you know. And, and like, it's just, there's no comparison today. So, if you look at, like, I was just looking at the, at the, the Beatitudes today from, from Matthew 5, and how in today's world, I'm not going to go through them all, but in today's world, the way the Beatitudes are understood or not understood has an awful lot to do with this kind of screen culture, this, uh, this entertainment culture that we have now. Like even just the first one, blessed are the poor in spirit, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Like that, that, that message, you are not going to get that from practically anything on YouTube unless it's an EWTN clip. Right? Blessed are the poor in spirit. There is the kingdom of heaven. In, the, in our day, we celebrate human achievement. But we will not celebrate the work of God in someone. There's a very famous speaker from Australia called Nick Wojcic. He's got no arms and no legs. Uh, but he goes around the world, actually, preaching and teaching. You know, he says there's the irony that, that God can ask a man with no arms and no legs to be his arms and his legs in the world, to go to travel around the world representing Jesus. Okay, but point being though, a lot of the videos made about him don't mention Jesus at all. They say, isn't it great that this guy with no arms and no legs, you know, made a life for himself and he got up and he, you know, he, he I was going to say he dug his heels in. <coughs> he, he, got, he got stuck in, you know, and didn't let his circumstances get him down. But that completely leaves out the fact that it was through God's grace that he did this. You know, his faith is so... Mother Teresa as well, you know, helping the poor to the poor, great, absolutely. She did this out of love for God, this recognizing that the poverty of spirit, I can't do this on my own, but I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. That's purity, uh, poverty of spirit, recognizing I can't on my own, but with God I can. But that's not the message we're going to hear today. Today we're going to hear, you can be whatever you want to be, which in reality we know is completely rubbish. Right? Because I will never be an All-Ireland hurling finalist. Winner. Never. Now, if I train really, really hard, I'm 41. I'm, 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 I'm too old. Too old. Too grey. Right? Too whatever. Uh, I'll never be that. Now, we can be a lot of things if we work really hard, but it's not true to say you can be anything you want to be. No, you can't be anything you want to be. You can be a lot of things if you work hard, but you can't be anything you want to be. That's not, that's just not reality. Okay, so this message, like a best of the poor in spirit, to recognize our, our inability before God and to allow him to fill us up, you will not find that watching TV. You will not find that on YouTube. You'll not find that in a world full of entertainment. Blessed are the gentle. Are we going to learn gentleness from, from, from our screen time? We're not. We're not. Uh, the, 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 you know, opportunities are, are seized. They're grasped. We capitalize on them, but not, no, the world is not for the gentle. That's, that's not the message we're going to get. I'll just, I'm going to put two together and then I'll, I'll, I'll leave it there for today. 
But it says, happy are those who hunger and thirst for what is right, they shall be satisfied. And also, happy are those persecuted in the cause of right. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So this idea of doing what, what is right, come what may. Doing what is right, even though there may be opposition. In fact, doing what is right, knowing there's going to be opposition. That is a wonderful thing to do. The danger or the difficulty lies in discerning what is right. Because, I mean, there are people, there have been wars since the year dot, and both sides thought they were right, yet their beliefs were completely opposed. So just because you're willing to fight for something doesn't mean you're actually fighting on the right side. Just because you want to swipe and kick and gouge until you get your way doesn't actually mean you're fighting for the right thing. So how do we know we're fighting for the right thing? How do we know? Well, the way we know, for us as Christians, is, is this the will of God? And is this helping me and others get to heaven? So like, for example, with the, uh, the pro-life issue, you know, is it the will of God that children be killed in the womb? No, no. It, it, it's, it just simply cannot be. So is, that, is it worth fighting to protect those lives? Yes, it is. Is that going to be opposed? You betcha. But we know we're fighting on God's side. This is, this is, it would be the will of God that, that these lives be protected. Now, does this mean that we have to go out and actually physically attack people? Absolutely not. But, but standing up for what is right, how do we d- discern what is right? It would be the will of God. God will inspire it. It will be coherent with his teachings. It will be coherent with the teachings of the church. So that's how we know. Otherwise, we can find ourselves maybe fighting on the wrong side, fighting against God. And that never ends well. So my dear brothers and sisters, in order to maintain our appetite for spiritual things, in order to maintain our appetite for spiritual truth, it requires self-discipline. It requires self-sacrifice. It requires me saying no to screen time. It requires me saying no to entertainment. Let's phrase it positively. It requires me saying yes to all these other, other wonderful possibilities, opportunities and alternatives that we have. You know, we have relatively good weather at the moment. We live in a safe country and we've been encouraged. I think most of us, many of us, and many of you have been going for walks like you've never gone for walks in your life before. It's just like when it was made illegal, well, by God, I'm going for a walk now, you know. (laughs) Typical Irish, make make it illegal and then we'll do it. Uh, So so uh, during one of your walks, bring your rosary. And if you're a younger person, go for a walk with a rosary beads. And if you're a young person and you happen to be going out with someone, if you're madly in love, um, bring that person for a, a walk with you. And say, would you mind terribly if we just pray a decade of the rosary? A decade of the what? A decade of the rosary. And he, she, they might say, well, um, I'm not quite sure how that goes. Don't worry, I'll show you. And if they pray it with you till the end, it's a really good sign that your relationship is going the right direction. Uh, if they say, no, I will not, and they start to growl, and their head turns 360, um, that's when the relationship then would need to, 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 to stop. Okay, so, good, great discernment. So we ask the good Lord to bless us all in our relationships, in our prayer life, in our rediscovery of, of, of the need for spiritual hunger, so that the Lord, the giver of all good things, may satisfy us. Amen.